Aquarius, hi. So this is going to be a reading for the month of September 2023. And I'll uh, do the reading for you and then I'll close it off with a oracle card. And these are general readings, so they may not resonate for all of you. If they do, there is an extended. At the end of the video, you can check out the link for that in the description box below if you want. Let's see what's going on here. The overall energy for the reading, the Four of Swords. I mean, there's definitely something going on here. Some commotion in a possible, maybe friendship, maybe more. I don't know what, it's, what it is. But you got some something, something with somebody going on here. And it's, it's experiencing healing. You know, there's ups and downs here. There's all sorts of things going on. So uh, starting off the reading, you get the Three of Cups crossed by the Six of Cups. Soul connection, part of your soul family here. It does look like it's in a good loving place, at least energetically speaking and intention wise, you know. Um, in your focus, the Six of Pentacles really giving me a sense of, well, I want to make it work, you know. So that's your intention right now. In the recent past, the Three of Pentacles uh, kind of giving me the symbol of this in a way. So again, leaning towards maybe a friendship. Maybe it's even more than that, but you're you're giving me a sense of partnership of, you know, someone you care deeply about and it's, they're there next to you um, a lot. Um, <clears throat> in your strength, the five of wands. I mean, you're giving me this kind of... Um, superpower that you may have to deal with conflict by creating conflict it's it's quite interesting the way i'm seeing this because it's like oh man let's say i'm bringing conflict to you i'm trying to pick a fight or something hummingbird behind me um and how you're going to settle that is by upping me. You know, I bring in a, some sort of energy at this level of conflict. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'll show you. And you're, you're bringing something bigger. Um, not to say that, you know, I start yelling at you and you start yelling louder at me. It's not about that. It's an energetic kind of a topper there, you know. Um I don't know why I'm seeing it in this way, because it's like, you know how to cut conflict with conflict, you know, which is quite odd. But anyways, in the um, immediate future, you get the Six of Swords. Um, yeah, things are cooling down. Things are definitely chilling here. Um, as I said, I see this situation kind of having its ups and downs right now. But overall, there's an energy of peace, of love, of good intentions over it. So it's kind of smooth. And then it has those lower downfalls there but it, it, it gets right back up so it doesn't stay there for too long um so it feels like things are calming down here uh supporting this reading the six of wands uh getting a sense of um feeling good about where things are going what's going on within the situation you know the energy that you're um surrounded by and you can't see clearly the ace of pentacles um I feel like the energies within the situations within the situation have already been shifted towards a better place. Um, I kind of get the sense that you're not recognizing that, though. You know, in your hopes and fears, <laughs> you're hoping for uh, change for the better. Which again, I just went through it. Like it's here, it's happening. You're, it's done. It's a done deal. You know, you're just not seeing it. Uh, because you may have different expectations of what that is. You know, you may want to see it like blasting you in your face or something. But if you had no expectations over it, and if you would just look at the situation for what it is, you would probably see it. In the potential outcome, the Three of Cups, uh, that's an energy of pain that's shown up. I have no idea what that's tied up to, but we'll see. So let's, uh, let's clarify. Let me clarify the Four of Swords. <coughs> The Ten of Swords, the Wheel of Fortune, the Temperance card. Hmm. 
Hold on. <laughs> Give me one split second. No. Who that? Oh, I didn't know there was a volume to it. Why do I have a person in front of my door ringing my... Oh, okay, I know what that is, but why are they ringing? Okay, anyways, sorry about that. Uh, for the Four of Swords, the Ten of Swords, the Wheel of Fortune. The Temperance card. It's just kind of giving me a bigger picture of what's going on. So this situation may have been in a bad place, like possibly a really bad place, but things are shifting for the better. Um, you're kind of giving me healing at an individual level that affects this situation in the bigger picture of things. So things are shifting within this connection, whatever this is. And I'm not seeing it yet, uh, what it is. And you know, it's not my business anyway. But it's just uh, definitely a um, partnership of some sort. Let's do the Three of Cups. You get the... Oh, well. You get the Queen of Cups, the Lovers, the Nine of Cups. Well, that's a lot of love right there. You know, it's kind of like a, a big ass truck loaded with love. So it could be something, something. Could be something, something. Why are you throwing me under the bus with this energy of friendship, though? You're, you're just kind of throwing that in here on top of... So you're giving me a sense of what what it represents at a soul level, and it's beautiful, and it's massive love there, and all sorts of things, and then it's like, yeah, okay, okay. Um, and then I see a wave of, you know, energy of friendship right on top of that. So it could be friendship. Who the hell knows? It's hard to tell sometimes uh, what's what, especially when I see it energetically and then how sometimes I get the push of what it is in the physical. But anyways, uh, for the six of cups, you get the nine of wands, the strength card, the page of wands. Mm, you're a little bit resistant to this. Now, I don't know. Hmm. It could be that the other energy is more open to working on this and you seem to be open, but you're a little more resistant than the other energy or the other way around because roles can be reversed here. Um, there's openness, there's curiosity, there's, yeah, let's do this. But in a way, it's a little more restricted, um, the openness that's showing up here on one of you, on one of your sides. I don't know who's who at this point. Let's do the Six of Pentacles. Come on. Take it easy. Mm. The Five of Swords, the Ten of Cups, the Queen of Swords. I feel like it's you, the one that's a little bit restrictive, and I feel like you're not seeing it. You know, you, you think, think, because you're giving me the Queen of Swords here, so you're definitely coming from a place of thinking about this, not feeling it. Uh, you think that you're fully open. No, I want for this to work out. I'm... Look at me. I'm here. I'm showing up for it, right? So that means I'm fully open. Nah. Nah. So just because you think you're good for this, open for this, have all the greatest intentions, that doesn't mean that there isn't some sort of a part of you that's restricted, that says no to this. Because there is. You know, so that's why you're showing up a little deceptive because you're trying to convince yourself that, no, you're the open one. They're probably the restricted one. Eh. It's you. Let's do the five of wands there in your strength. Ace of pentacles, the judgment card, the ace of wands. Hmm. I mean, the intention is for exactly this energy that you're not acknowledging, you're not recognizing. Uh, for things to change for the better, for the situation to find itself in a brand new beginning, you know, in a in a new place and in great energies here. And again, intentions, yes. Um, how this energy is coming into action, that's where some things need to be checked. 
uh, because one energy is showing up fully open to doing this. The other one is showing up 90% open, 10% closed off, rejecting whatever this is. That doesn't offer this an equal give and take kind of a situation. And when it comes down to the equal take, you're giving me a sense of, no, I'm fully open, so we're working together on this. So, which that's why it's showing up deceptive because, you know, um, there's, there's not a perfect match in these energies that are um, interacting here towards the same goal, you know, both have the same goal, the same intention. So let's do the Six of Swords in the immediate future. The Six of Pentacles, the Six of Wands, the Two of Pentacles. You're heading in that direction of equal give and take. Uh, the interesting part about it is that when you get there, you feel it. You're like, okay, we're here. We're finally, you know, on the same page with this. We're doing this, you know. But the minute you get to that realization and that achievement, you're kind of like, uh, what now? Well, I don't know, see what happens where you're at, you know, with things. Because it feels like, almost like you want to take charge from that point on and see where things are going, but you want to direct those things. Yeah, fuck it. Let, let, let it happen. You know, you don't need to get to what now. You need to get to whatever the hell is coming your way. You don't need to take charge of the what now, you know. Let's do the Six of Wands and the Supportive Energies. The Empress, the Chariot, the Emperor. I mean, things are things are amazing here for sure. If they're not amazing, they're heading in an amazing place. Uh, what's been going on here? There's been a little bit of off balance kind of an energy, but it's getting back into place, into balance. Um, and I, I don't think it's a friendship. I think it's more than that. But uh, yeah, definitely. I don't know. Maybe you fell off the, the that page that the both of you were on, and now it's like, okay, we're back on, you know, or heading in that direction for sure. Um, let's do the Ace of Pentacles in the um, hidden energies. You're one step ahead all the time, or you want to be. Uh, that's why you get to places of what now, you know, because um, you're like, instead of kind of going through these energies as they show up, you go through them like really quick so that you can get to the next step, which is not even here yet. And it's like, well, I want to be prepared. Prepared for what? <laughs> you know, let it happen. Let it happen naturally. Because um, you're not even enjoying this as it unfolds. So, the Ace of Pentacles, the Death card, the Seven of Cups, the High Priestess. Yeah, you're like, okay, this done. Let's go to next. Let's. It, it feels like you have the need to anticipate to be ahead of the game okay uh, but you're missing a lot of what's happening in the game in front of you you know the wheel of fortune in your hopes and fears the knight of swords the three of wands the six of cups <clears throat> Also, I feel like you're starting to be aware that you're kind of wanting to be in charge, of, in charge, in charge too, but ahead of the game. Because what you're doing with this energy of being ahead of the game is like you're forgetting you're, you're, this game you're playing with somebody else. And if you're ahead of the game, you got to wait for them every time, you know, because maybe they don't want to be ahead of the game. Maybe they want to go with the flow of what's going on. Maybe they want to be in the game. You're like, well, yeah, but... Yeah, and there's definitely a need to take charge here for some reason, you know, on your side. And by doing that, it feels like all the time you have to wait for them. And sometimes you have to wait a while because, you know, sometimes they're going to come to where you're at faster, sometimes slower. It's their own journey, their own game, you know, their own rules to the game. So it almost feels like you're doing this thinking that you have a sense of control over what's happening because, you know, you need to be in charge. But then when you have to wait, it's like, come on, come on. Okay, I'll wait for you. You're here? Okay, let me get ahead of the game there again. And it's like you never get to spend time in the game with them. 
because you always have to be ahead of the game. And then when they catch up, maybe it'll stay for five minutes, but it's like, oh, okay, let me, let me go again. I need to go. And it's like, where are you at with this? Where, you know, what's going on here? Um, let's do the three of swords. In the potential outcome, the nine of pentacles, the eight of swords, the devil. Yeah, and a lot of time, a lot of the times you feel alone. You feel like, oh my God, I'm doing this by myself. Yeah, you are. If you're functioning under this energy of being ahead of the game, I just told you. It's going to take a while for them to catch up with you. So yeah, you're going to feel like you're doing this. You know, you're alone in this. Because you are. They're not, they're, you know, you got to wait for them. When they're coming over, okay, five minutes today, maybe ten minutes next time if I'm generous. But then I got to be ahead of the game again. And it's just you because the other person is not playing this game, you know, of being ahead of the game. So it's not looking healthy there for you. You're missing the journey. You're missing the game. So what, what's the accomplishment here? Because at the end of the day, it turns into pain. And it turns into this feeling of I'm, I'm by myself. I'm alone in this. And with the devil there, that doesn't look like a healthy energy. And I could have told you that without even the devil showing up, you know? Because it's like you're losing any sense of security within you. Because even if you feel like you're by yourself in this, um, it doesn't feel good. You know, it's not like you're, you know, stepping into your power and you're independent and you're doing things. No, you're playing this game with somebody else. You're supposed to be the feeling of somebody else next to you. But if you always run to be ahead of the game, they're not going to be there. So not, not the greatest energy. It's going to show up for you. It's going to hit you in the face. So when it does, hopefully you'll acknowledge it, start working on it. And, you know, no need to be ahead of the game here. Because I don't understand this ahead of the game. What are you going to do from there? You know, it's not like you can control the game from there. Uh, the game is still going to play out as it plays out. You're just going to wait. For others to join you, for the game to catch up, and then doing this again. It's kind of tiresome, you know? Let's see what the universe has. The Seven of Swords, the Page of Wands, the Page of Cups. Hmm. Yeah, you're missing a lot of things. That's what the universe has given me, too. You're missing that innocence to this, that flow of the game, that, you know, let's do this together kind of a thing. And it's more fun that way. You know, it, it, think of it as going with someone on a road trip and you decide for some reason to take two different cars. You set it up for I'm going to be in my own car, you're going to be in yours from the get go, you know. Um, and on the road, you're not even going to wait for one another. One of you is going to be, I'll wait for you at that rest stop and, you know, take your time. I'll wait for you there. And they are taking their time. And two hours later, you're like, not in the mood to drive anywhere. It, it's setting yourself up for not a fun road trip to begin with, you know, when you decide to go separate for some reason. Because that's what it feels like here. So you're missing a lot of the fun, a lot of the playfulness of this game by doing that. So let's do the Star Codes Astro Oracle. <clears throat> Ascendant entrance number thirty five. Okay. The action. How do you see the world? Take a long look at the assumptions and presumptions through which you filter your experience of reality. Really look at how you your privilege, trauma, or certain attributes of your history can distort the reality of the moment. Do what you can to dismantle those obstructions so you can see the whole view. Open that aperture. Conversely, look carefully at the signals you send off. Do they match your intent? Do you say you're fine when you really need a hug? Are you trained to sound modest or apologetic when really you know what you're doing? 
Do you act like you know what you're doing when you don't? Notice what you project onto the world and take responsibility for how you are seen. I had a scratch. Uh, the ascendant is where you become visible. If this makes you nervous, investigate what needs to be healed or where you need to grow your confidence in order to feel comfortable being seen. If you are asking about a project, look for, look for what needs to be repaired or improved before you hold a press conference. Challenge. The front door is always one part of the house. Be willing to look beyond appearances and into the heart, but don't count on others' ability to do so. Two, the gift. Over time, your reputation is built on what you do, not how you look. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what I have for you. Hope this helped and I'll see you next time.